May God be with you. Welcome to Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Uh, a warm welcome to all of you here um, in the worship center, as well as anyone who's visiting online or online at home. Um, however you are coming uh, this morning, please know um, that your presence makes a difference here. And so we're just glad to be together on this beautiful uh, summer morning. Um, we're also so grateful for the musical gifts of Blake and Abby uh, this morning. Uh, Abby is playing her viola and cantering, so uh, we have a dynamic duo over here. Uh, Jesus uh, today continues to teach in parables, um, as he's been doing for several weeks now. Um, Jesus is always trying to use ordinary things and ordinary um, uh, events in our lives to describe what God's intent is for the world. Um, and so this morning we have several short parables, um, each with their own images and each with their own surprises uh, to guide our way. So this morning we trust in the living word um, and in the sacrament, and we trust that the spirit will move among us um, and offer something for each one of us today. So let us worship God together. We begin now by showing up just as we are here, acknowledging the ways that we have been living apart uh, from relationship with God and from one another. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community we have squandered your blessings and hoarded your bounty. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak and have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst and offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we sing.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
pray together. God of heaven and earth, we search for your presence among creation and most especially in the details of what we experience each day. Help us see the seeds, the yeast, the treasures, the pearls, and the nets of your mercy, which you promise are here even now. Amen. Our scripture this morning is a continuation of the parables, some of which you will notice are worded in a rather confusing way. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 through 33, and verses 44 through 52. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, to, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until it was all leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Word of God, word of life. Well, you may be seated. Let's pray. God, um, in this counter of life in front of us, help us clear it off. Get rid of the shoulds so we can receive your word. Amen. Which little game piece do you choose when you play Monopoly? That's not a game piece. The little hotel, those little plastic things? No, like the metal game. <laughs> You're making this more fun. <laughs> That's what you buy. <laughs> That's right. As a refresher, there's the top hat, the race car, the thimble, the Scotty dog, the battleship, the boot, the cannon, the money bag. And for me, I always pick the iron. Now, I'm not sure why, but I always do. Are you like that too? Do you always pick the same Monopoly piece each time you play? Jesus is teaching again, and today offers these short stories on what the kingdom of heaven is like, kind of like Monopoly pieces. Which one will you choose to understand what God is all about. The mustard seed, the yeast, the pearl, the hidden treasure, and the net. 
Maybe Jesus talked about God in so many varied stories because he knew he was talking to so many different people, farmers and merchants, the poor, fisher people, the rich, those in the know, and those pushed away, somehow trusting that different images and explanations would help people imagine what is possible, what is given to us, because God is here already in this world. Now, we need to name the elephant in the room, the kingdom of heaven, what in the world is that? Jesus mentions it so many times in Matthew's gospel, and it can be confusing. The whole kingdom language makes me think of Hogwarts in Harry Potter or the Magic Kingdom castle at Disney World. But the kingdom of heaven is not some imagined magical castle that we hope to make it to someday. The kingdom of heaven is how Jesus talks about God's presence in this world. Some say reign of God rather than kingdom of heaven. And what it is, is what, what is possible because God is here. Now, I wish there was a simple explanation to all these little stories, perfect allegories so we could be given instruction on what to do and how to notice and embody this kingdom of heaven. The reality is, though, as we know, that it's not always clear to understand the kingdom of God because it's found and it's mixed into the complexity of the world and the demands that we place on ourselves and each other. And really, if you think about it, we're just too busy, focused on some horizon that someone else told us about, that we miss God's presence in the here and now. The wonder, though, as God's word is spoken, is how these little stories will find us and speak into our lives. I would like today to focus on the story of the treasure in the field. So Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure in a field that someone finds, and when she finds it, she hides it again and sells everything she has to buy that field. Hmm. That is confusing, as you said, Al. You are plowing away on some Monday, and the blade hits something hard, a rock, you think. So you stop, and you loosen it, and there is a treasure out in the middle of nowhere. Now, don't you think most people would dig up the treasure and leave, call in rich the next day, and never look back? But Jesus says, no, the treasure is found and then hid again. And then she cashes all that she has so she can buy the whole field. Why buy the field when you have already found the treasure? What is this treasure? And why is it buried and not more accessible? Renowned preacher, theology professor, and storyteller Fred Craddock swears this happened to him. He was visiting in a home of one of his former students after graduation, and after a great dinner, the young parents excused themselves and hustled the kids off to bed, leaving Fred in the living room with a family pet, a large, sleek greyhound. Earlier in the evening, Fred had watched the kids roll on the floor, playing with a family dog. That's a full-blooded greyhound there, the father of the kids had told Fred. Once he raced professionally down in Florida, then we got him. Great with the kids, that greyhound. Well, sitting there with the dog, the dog turned to Fred and asked, Is this your first visit to Connecticut? No, Fred answered. I went to school up here a long time ago. Well, I guess you heard I came up from Miami, said the greyhound. Oh, yeah, you retired, Fred said. No, is that what they told you? 
No, no, I didn't retire. I tell you, I spent 10 years as a professional racing greyhound. That means 10 years of running around that track day after day, seven days a week with others chasing that rabbit. Well, one day I got up real close. I got a good look at that rabbit and it was a fake. <laughs> I had spent my whole life chasing a fake rabbit. Hey, I didn't retire, I quit. The person plowing the field thinks that all there is is Monday through Friday, grinding away to pay the bills, and one day at the story she's living changes. She discovers something she never has seen before, and it changes her so much that she wants to buy the field because she thinks there could be more treasure buried there or because that dry, rocky ground all of a sudden became holy, this unexpected encounter takes her life in an unexpected direction. Maybe a wake-up call that there is more to life than we think, and it will surprise us as we unearth what is right in front of us. That is the kingdom of heaven. Interesting, though, in this short story that Jesus does not provide descriptors on the one in the field, no resume of achievements, no words about their faithfulness, just a person tilling the fields, thinking that what she sees is it. And then a moment of experience and discovery, there's more than what she can imagine, so much more that they can't take the treasure and run she hides it again and she goes and buys the field she needs to be near the place where life became life she went for it not long after getting married randy and i were invited on a trip to the holy land my advisor who was one of my favorite teachers from seminary was leading it and it was a bucket trip for both of us we didn't have kids or a dog, but I was still in seminary and wasn't working, and we were making it on Randy's income alone. The trip obviously wasn't budget for, of course, and we discerned, and we decided no. We should save money and prepare for whatever future was ahead for us. On paper, it was the responsible decision, and we both look back and we regret that we didn't go, that we didn't cash it all in and buy the field. We didn't know then that it's really hard to go on trips with kids and pets and demanding jobs. Now, we can't know if that trip experience would have changed our lives, but looking back, we would have said yes. Preacher Will Williman says, we get life, but adventure, treasure, the life worth living, God help us. We sell out too quickly. We settle for too little. We make nothing more important than money, and thereby we miss the treasure. Jesus never says the kingdom of heaven is a trip to the Holy Land. Jesus never says trusting in faith will be easy. There is a cost. It will disrupt. It will change your life. In fact, people may even despise you because of it. Question your decision. And as we walk with Jesus even ever so soon, he will be hated by the community that raised him because of what he proclaims. Jesus will call people to drop everything to follow him. It's not a walk in the park. It takes guts and laying it out there. There is risk. And we are promised that as we plow along, there will be a treasure worth selling it all for. And maybe that's why people leave jobs to pursue a passioned hobby or schooling in a new field, why they empty their wallets for a cause that breaks their hearts. 
why people won't stop advocating for a voice that is silent, to work tirelessly for work that has no ending, to give something a try that still has so many unanswered questions and risks. Because God promises to be with us as we stumble, have regrets, or as we follow an easier path, And even you come today with unfinished business in your lives, hopes that you are reaching for, a path ahead that is still unclear, circumstances in our lives that we do not choose, but the places nonetheless that we are called to tend to and care for, to believe with all our guts that the story is still unfolding and the kingdom of God is here. Even today, God never stops calling us from chasing around the track to find what the real kingdom of heaven is already among us. And so if you're still trying to get off that track, I invite you to exhale long enough to eat the bread and drink the cup of life from Jesus because Jesus will never stop teaching and God never stops revealing the treasure of God's mercy as you step out in faith because from the smallest seed the smallest measure of yeast the dry field of everyday life a net made of rope there is treasure the rarest pearl because God's love is so great for you and the world. And the rest, we will still just have to iron out. Amen. Please stand as we sing. profess our faith now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now the peace of God be with you all. Please offer one another a sight of God's peace and love. We continue with our offering, uh, ever grateful for all the ways that you contribute your treasure, whether it's talent or uh, financial resources uh, to, to our mission and vision here at Mount Olivet. There's a basket here, a box in the back, a Venmo code, and uh, thanks very much. Pray together. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that all may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one now by the Holy Spirit, we join in prayer as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our, day, our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us to temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen this uh, is the meal um, that comes out to meet you with mercy and healing and this deep sense of belonging however you're coming this morning. So taste and see that God is so good. If you are online having communion at home, hear these words, the body of Christ is given for you, the blood of Christ is shed for you. For those of you here in person, uh, ushers will guide you forward. Uh, the crackers are gluten-free, wine in cups is dark, juice is light, and you are welcome to use the kneelers um, after the meal to pray. Come to the table, all has been prepared.
now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Well, trusting in that treasure of God and the abundance of God's mercy and welcome, um, we offer our prayers now in community for a world uh, so desperately in need. So as usual, I will begin with a short prayer um, and then open it up for your voice. Um, if you are online, we welcome your prayers as well, and Pastor Beth will give voice to those prayers uh, before we close. So let's pray. Um, gracious God, uh, treasure planting God, fish netting God, bread baking God, pearl hunting God, um, you shape us, you continue to shape us into this daily living out of parables um, because you're here. Um, and we pray that um, with your spirit that resides in each of us, um, that we would be able to see what is right in front of us, um, see that path ahead, see that treasure um, in our daily lives, see those places that we are called to just um, give it all up and follow you. Um, help us see you. Um, in, in our daily lives and in our experiences and in our own stories. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. What prayers do we have today, friends? Yeah, Bob. Bob prays for his nephew, Will, and uh, Will's family, immediate family, and surrounding family and friends. Um, God, please visit Will. Um, give him strength to overcome um, some of the challenges that he's facing, including um, coping with um, mental health, um, his mental health um, issues, um, substance abuse, God, these challenges are so great, um, and the impacts are so heavy. And we just ask that you would visit this family and visit Will with your love, mercy, and kindness, um, and that um, you would make a difference today in their lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yes, Tony. Tony prays for um, creation, that we would be good stewards of creation um, as we see the impacts of not being good stewards of creation. Um, God, we pray that you would heal the earth. Um, we pray for uh, the cleaning of polluted rivers and lakes and um, preservation of trees and the smallest of seeds. Um, send advocates and help us be advocates for sustainable practices and for healing of this uh, treasure that you have given us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I'd like to pray a prayer of thanksgiving for the returning uh, high schoolers who got off the train yesterday at what time? About noon. They were a bit delayed, but just um, for our high schoolers who returned from uh, Flathead Lake, Montana, for their travels on the train, which were bumpy and long, um, and uh, just prayers... Um, for the gift of uh, relationships and moments in creation and uh, moments to develop relationships um, with uh, 
with others and for the seven adults that went along as well. Uh, God, we give you thanks for their safe return. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers online. You, uh, as you pray for your niece, Suzanne, who's fighting cancer, um, God, we pray um, in uh, this time uh, for Suzanne and for all the caregivers to tend to her body and this disease um, that is unpredictable and um, unruly, uh, that impacts everyone so differently, for love and healing and um, for your presence to find Suzanne, we pray, God, in your mercy. First God and answer us in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Announcements. Kathy and Mark. I bet I know what this is about. Good morning. Well, we're less than a week away from Bruise Eats and Beats this coming Saturday from 4 to 9. And tickets are on sale, as you've heard already, but the early bird pricing ends tomorrow. So August 1st, it goes up to $30. So let your friends and family know to buy tickets now. Um, the silent auction is going to be open at noon today online. Uh, just check out the website. There'll be a link there. Um, you can start bidding at noon once it's open, which is great. There are over 100 items on the list. And big thanks to Diane Dickmeyer, who has just done an amazing job pulling it all together, and to all the donations and the people that have donated items. Uh, and then there are still a few volunteer spots available, mostly in admissions and concessions. So if you uh, want to spend a couple hours helping out, um, either sign up online or let me know, and we'll get you the nifty gold t-shirt that I'm wearing. And you get free admission to the event, and it's really a great way to meet um, people and, and uh, experience the event in a different way. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm Mark Schmidt, and uh, I'm going to wrap this up with a few comments as well. Oh, I need that sorry. piece of paper That's there. Right. We went over this in rehearsal. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, you guys remember, we first talked to you back in April, right? I think it was April 16th. And I got out ahead of my skis a little bit. Remember what I did? I promised you what? No bugs, that was big, but a beautiful summer evening, right? Said 80 degree temperatures, probably even made the sound of crickets uh, chirping in the background, but those of you that do have a weather app on your phone, you're welcome to join me in looking up the weather. I'm gonna give you the forecast for Saturday, okay? Saturday's low will be 62 at 6 a.m. The high will be 82 degrees between five and six, and it drops down to about 70 by the end of the event. How's that sound? <laughs> okay. The precipitation forecast, you know how many inches are forecasted? <laughs> Zero. Zero. Okay. And then we look a little bit further. Humidity, well, it's going to be about 50% humidity, about 40% when we start. It'll get a little bit, uh, maybe a little higher as we finish. How's it sounding so far? <laughs> sounding pretty good? Exactly. And Barb, there's going to be no spy balloons. None. So we checked and uh, they're not on the forecast. So it's going to be a great night. So um, we're really looking forward to this. I think we're ready, right? Mm -hmm. We look at the numbers. We have eight sponsors, okay? And they're donating together about $12,250. How amazing is that, right? We have community builders. The way it looks right now, we got about 34 community builders. We'll take your check right up to the end. <laughs> but um, all together, plus some uh, miscellaneous donations, that's about $15,000. Okay? Really cool. Um, volunteers signed up. We have, when we count everybody involved, about 97. So 100 people, 100 of you, are going to donate your time and effort to do this and make this thing happen. And we've got about 125 tickets sold. Um, we expect a lot more in the next few days, and we do expect a good walk-up. So uh, the table is set. The weather's perfect. Here's what we need you to make that final call to your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, whatever, and say, come on over. It's going to be a great night, and we look forward to seeing you all there. So thanks for your help. Um, we'll see you on Saturday.
And as we sing. God who calls out across the universe and yet speaks within the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and forever. Go in peace, be held in love. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.